Hello and welcome back on my YouTube channel, Part Doshi Learning by Doshi. So today in this video, we are going to implement one of the very new and amazing concept, I would say, in UiPath apps. You might have not seen this somewhere else before, but if you are someone who is actively working on apps or your organization is building different kind of apps for different clients, you might have got this request or you might get this request that we want to create a add to favorites kind of feature. Now we have been seeing this in many different websites or applications that we use. That something you can just add to your favorites for quick usage or something like that. It can be an app, it can be an option or something like that. So as you see on my screen right now, what I have is three different apps as you can see on the UI over here. The UI could be more better, but since I just wanted to implement the feature and explain how it can be done, we have kept it simple for now. Okay, so if you see, I have three different apps where I have option to add it to apps over here, right? Now, if you see, add it to favorites, add it to favorites. This two apps have been already added to favorites. When I do this, the following app has been added to your favorites list. Refresh the page. When I do it, I can see edit to favorites message over here. So if it is already added to favorite, it will display edit to favorite message. Here is an option where you can see the show favorites which have been added. So there are three that have been added to favorites as we can see. Now if I hover over here, deselect. I think there is a spelling mistake that needs to be corrected, but that's fine. Deselect the option to remove for favorites. I'm going to deselect this one, deselect this two, and deselect this three. All have been removed from favorites. If I go back to the home page, they are not added to the favorites over here. So we are going to see how we can create this amazing feature in any UI path app that you want to develop. Also, you might be thinking, how have I created this particular box or how is the UI so well designed with this or curly designs and all over here. So before we get into our add to favorites thing, what I have done is I have used the new page template. So if you go to new page, here you will see there are different templates available over here from which you can take inspiration and design your own apps in a more better way. So if you see here, there, there is image and everything added. All right. Okay. So now let's get started with designing our add to, add to favorites app. All right. So here, first what I have done is I have used template. As you can see, I've used this particular template. I removed the header and content and I placed my own things. There are two pages that I've created. One is which shows what has been added to favorites. So that is this page. And one which is my home page where I have an option to add to favorites and different things. So there are two pages. You can duplicate it and create it. It's just that the function will change a little different. That is here I need this add to favorite text in my other page i don't need it so it is not added over here so this is the very first thing that you need to do is you need to create two pages with this ui or whatever suits your app then what i have done is i have created a data service so you have to go to ui for data services i have created add to favorites in the data in the fields i have created two fields that is app name and if it is favorite or not so there are two one is a normal text and one is a Boolean value, yes or no. So if you see the data over here is added by default first, I have manually added the data. It's not something that has been added from the UI path apps, but yes, you can do that as well. And the default value that I'm setting is set to no over here, okay? After that, you what you have to do is you have to add the entity. So click on entity, I'll just navigate again, click here, entity, and add to favorites, and here you can just select this and click on add. I have already added. So my entity is added away. Then you need to create one variable. Let me just show the data type of it. It is a list source of add to favorites. Now this is a VB app that I have created. So initially we would use the entity variable directly in the legacy app and we will perform different kind of operations. But now it has been more simplified and little advanced as well, where you can just create a list source variable initializer. I'll show how you initialize that as well. But yes, 
So you will have to perform the initialization of the variable. So and it where to favorites is my variable. The type list source of the entity type. On home page load event, let me show how I am initializing it. You set to value event. Then in value, what you have to do, just click on this query builder, select your entity over here and click on save. Because we want all the columns and everything. If you have any condition, you can add that as well. So if I go to query builder, you can add a condition, maybe app name or something like that. But here I don't have, I generally just want all the information. And this has been initialized. Then we can use it as a list and link queries that we are writing. I'll start with the basic steps over here. Then what I've done is I have three individual containers, one, two, and three. Here this app, one, two, three, I've just added the header. This is also a header. The style is on header level three, I believe. Yes, it is header level three. So I've added the these three texts. What are the conditions and how I'm doing it? We'll get to that, but here I'm just explaining you how can you structure it. So I've added three at two fields. Then over here, I have added the switch control. So if I go to add input, I will have a switch control over here. You can have something else as well. You can have buttons or probably you can have something else as well, right? So yeah, you can have a checkbox as well. You can do that. I've added add to favorites and there are three add to favorites for three individual containers only. Now this text, if I go over here, this text is only displayed when it has already been added to favorite. So if it is added, if I refresh my page, the value is displayed over here, add to favorites. So you need to change the hidden property of this particular text message, which is there. Now, how will it be defined? What you have to do is you have to use the app name and you have to get the favorites value. Once you do that, you have to check if the favorites value is yes, then you need to set the hidden value to false. That means that particular text should not be hidden. So if I go over here, let me open this in expression editor. Okay. So if you see convert to Boolean, now what my expression is, this is my variable that I had explained. You have to use variable dot data where function of x. This is just a link, very simple syntax x dot app name equal to app one. Because here we are talking about app one. Uh, I have I have hard coded it to app one. If I go back over here. So entity dot add to favorites dot data where function and you first because obviously it will be first dot which column value you want the favorite column. So I will get that converting into Boolean because it will give me an error of implicit conversion. If this value is true, then I want to set the hidden property to false because I want to display that value. And if this value is false, then I want to send the hidden property to true. So this is what I have done. for the next one as well. It will be the same. But here from app one, it will be app two. Similarly, if I go over here from app one, sorry, from app one, it will change to app three. Everywhere it remains the same. So this is how you can set the hidden property. Like you can fetch the value from the data service, which is there, and you can set the hidden property for this. And then obviously if I turn this on, or if I select this option, right? Then I have to update my data service entity. How am I doing it on value change in edit rule? If it is true, then I'm going to update the entity record, which record where again, here I'm using a expression that I showed over there dot data where this function app name dot first I have to get the ID because entity record ID is what required when you want to update the entity record right all right so yeah that is the case then in app name obviously I'm going to specify the same app name so I'm just going to pull the same thing again I don't want to hard code it yet and I'm going to pick what is in the data service already entered and app name it is going to update it. And the favorites property is going to set to be true. Then this is how you will update the entity record, which is over here. So if I refresh it now, we had switched it on the switch button and it is yes. If I come back over here, when updated, I'm displaying a message. The following app has been added to your favorites. There is a correction over here refresh the page. 
So this is how you configure it and you update your data service entity. The same goes for here. Here it will be app to, here it will be app to, as you can see the syntax and the same will be for the third one. Sorry, over here, app three, app three. So this is how we have configured the first bit. If you have any doubts till this part, please put it in the comment section and I'll answer it as quickly as I can. So till now, what we have done is we have created two pages. We have created a data service entity. And then we have created a basic structure of our app to which elements we want to add to favorites and show it in our favorite list, right? After that, what we have done is we initialized our variable of the list source of our entity, which is add to favorites. Post that, we created the switch buttons, which we need to let user add it to the favorites. And we added a button as well, show favorites on this. We are obviously just opening the page that is the other page favorite page. After that, we configured all our switch buttons and our text message that we want to display. Now the other page that we have created here, I don't want that message. So this container, which is there, right? I have configured the hidden property on this particular container here. Again, I will fetch the value from the data service entity. So if you see over here, convert to Boolean again, fetch the value of properties. If this is true, right? If this turns out to be true, then I want to convert it to false because hidden properties should always be false. That is the reason I'm using not over here. So if favorites is true, we'll turn it to false over here so that hidden becomes false. And if it is false, it will get turned to true and it will not be displayed. So the same apps that you have added over here, you will have to add them in the favorite page as well. It is something static that you will have to do. It is not dynamic that will just get done right so it is not dynamically getting created in your page you are creating it and configuring the hidden property so i've configured it over here one the other one is for app two and the other one is for app now what i showed at the start of the video is on default i'm going to keep it to true because it has been added to favorite here i have added a tooltip which needs a small spelling correction deselect the option to remove from favorites and here on value change what i'm doing is the same that I had over there. I'm going to have it, have it over here. So here, the only thing that is changing is I'm adding it to false. So the data service entity is updated. Let me go back over here. It is updated to false and it will be removed. So the next time when we load the page, that is the reason we give for better user experience, we give the messages, refresh the page. So once it refreshes the page, it will fetch the latest values from the data service entity and based on that, the elements will be displayed. So this is how you will configure. Just remember here what we had it, we did not have any filter on the container level because we always wanted it to be displayed. But here we are creating and we are keeping the hidden filter directly on the container. You can add as many. I can just duplicate this, add it over here and duplicate the previous one and add it over there. And here I've given a button that goes to home page on which the refresh will happen actually. So this is how we have created our add to favorites app. Just to summarize it again, we will run it quickly. So yes, we need to clone the pages, create duplicate of it. In one, we need to apply the hidden condition on the container and on other, we want to apply it on the elements. Add it to favorites, add it to favorites. This has been added. Let me go to show. All the three are displayed. Now I'm going to remove all three of them. Oops. It, it was, I think, the previous message. And go back to home page. Okay. I think we did not update it. Oops. Let me go to show favorites. Let me remove this. It has been removed. We did not reload the page. That is the reason it did not go. And if you see now, add to favorites is not visible. So guys, this is how you can, I think we hardly took 10 minutes, but in 10 minutes, you can create an amazing feature in UiPath apps, which is add to favorite feature. And I hope this helps you in your, any of your UiPath apps project that you have been working on or something interesting that you can develop. Thank you for staying up till the end of the video. And I hope you find this video helpful. And if there is any specific feature that you are trying to implement in UiPath apps and you want me to make a video on that, Please feel free to post that in the comment section and I'll try to make a video on that.
Thank you so much for watching the complete video and see you in the next one.